Hi, this is Dave Farina from CosmosSafari.com. Have you ever wondered how to find M31, the Andromeda Galaxy? In today's episode of our Deep Sky with Dave Messier Marathon series, I will walk you through my four-step method for finding this amazing autumn celestial wonder. This video is brought to you in part by OPT Telescopes, a world leader in telescopes and accessories. Click my affiliate link in the description below to help support Cosmos Safari's mission to bring the universe closer than you think. M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, also known as NGC 224, is the closest large barred spiral galaxy to our own Milky Way galaxy and it's also the most distant naked eye object at a distance of 2.54 million light years. M31 has been known about since ancient times due to the ability to see this object with the naked eye. But it's only been understood as a completely different galaxy, just like our own Milky Way galaxy, since the early 20th century, when Edwin Hubble first realized the true distances to these island universes. The brightness and angular size of M31 makes it the largest and brightest galaxy in the entire sky. At an apparent angular size of 3.167 degrees by 1 degree, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, is extremely large in the sky. It's about six times the width of the full moon. At a magnitude of 3.44, M31 is bright enough to be observed with the naked eye from dark skies and is one of the best targets for binoculars or telescopes. Due to the high sensitivity of cameras compared to the human eye, astrophotography can be conducted on this object even from light polluted skies, especially when combined with a light pollution or narrowband filter. As always, large diameter optics will provide the best results by increasing the light gathering and resolving power. With this object, however, it's important to make sure you keep the focal length of your optics low enough to see the entire object within your field of view. Step 1. Find a starting asterism or constellation. At my location in the northeast US, we will start our observation by locating the Great Square of Pegasus asterism as it rises in the eastern sky just after sunset starting in late July through early August. The Great Square of Pegasus asterism is part of the constellations of Pegasus as well as Andromeda, and is made of many of the constellation's brightest stars. Throughout autumn, the Great Square will move westward as time progresses towards winter. However, due to the shortening of days and nighttime coming earlier each month, the Great Square remains in the evening sky throughout the fall and into winter, and sets just after sunset in the western sky by early to mid-January. Step 2. Find the object using star hopping. Today we are going to use the stars of the Great Square of Pegasus to help us find M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Starting at the Great Square, we first need to identify some of the major component stars of this important asterism. The Great Square itself is made up of four stars oriented in a nearly square shape. Three of these stars found in the constellation of Pegasus are Shi'at, Markab, and al Janab. The fourth star, to complete the square, Alpharetz, is actually part of the constellation of Andromeda, the Princess. In order to find M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, we will start at the top star of the Great Square, Shi'at, and draw an imaginary line through Alpharetz. As we pass through Alpharetz, the next bright star we will encounter is Delta Andromedae, in the lower of the two legs of the Andromeda constellation. We will continue along the lower leg of Andromeda to the very bright middle star, Mirac. From Mirac, we will draw another imaginary line through Mu Andromedae, the middle star of the upper leg of Andromeda and continue through an equal distance towards the Andromeda galaxy. You can use your hand as a basic measuring tool. The distance between these two stars should be slightly less than the width of three fingers held at arm's length. If you do not own a Telrad finder scope, move on to step three. If you do own a Telrad finder scope, 
you will notice that the distance between these two stars is just under 4 degrees, approximately equal to the width of the Telrad's reticle. Move the reticle, causing Mu Andromedae to move from the western side of the reticle to the eastern side of the reticle. Either of these methods should place M31 nicely within the field of view of your finder scope. Step 3. Move your eye to your magnified finder. At this point, you should have M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, in your magnified finder scope. In dark skies, M31 should be easily visible in a 50mm or larger finder scope or binoculars. In extremely dark skies, it will even be visible with the naked eye. It will appear as a wispy, cotton ball-like object. Center M31 in your finder scope. Step 4. Move your eye to your widest field eyepiece. Always start your observations at your widest field eyepiece. For this simulation, I've chosen my 100 degree apparent field of view StellarView Optimus 20mm eyepiece on my StellarView SVX-130T Premier Apochromatic Refractor. Center your object in the field of view and slowly work your way down to smaller and smaller focal length eyepieces, centering each one until you get the desired field of view for your setup. Short focal length telescopes and long focal length eyepieces work best on this object due to its very large angular size. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Deep Sky with Dave. This is part of my Messier Marathon series of videos in which I plan to go through all 110 Messier objects. If you find this video helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell if you want to find out each time I upload a new video. If you have a different method for finding M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, want to provide me with feedback on this video, have suggestions or requests for future videos, or if you have any other questions regarding my star hopping techniques, observational astronomy, telescopes, or astrophotography, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you from Dave Farina here at CosmosSafari.com. There's guns.